And Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And he said he went away to prepare for us a place. And so we want to discuss this process of being prepared to enter into the Father's house. In John chapter 13, beginning with verse 1, we see this process of being prepared. John chapter 13, verse 1 says, Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. Jesus is preparing the disciples to come into the Father's house, to enter into the Father's house or enter into the Father's temple. And this is before Jesus is about to be offered up, before he is about to be crucified, and before the resurrection. So, why was it important for Jesus to wash the disciples' feet? This is something that takes place before you enter into a house, back in the customs in that day. The the feet were washed at the door. At the door. Are you listening? In a sense, this is a type of the outer court of the temple. And this represents the Gentiles, or this represents the world. And what Jesus is saying is if I don't wash, you, 
not speaking of the feet, but this was a teaching. He was using this as a principle of serving. He said, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. In the Old Testament scriptures, we see that God told Moses to take his shoes off and that he was standing on holy ground. And he told Joshua to take his shoes off. He was standing on holy ground. And this has to do with redemption. But in the New Testament, not only does Jesus have them take their shoes off, but he takes them a step further where he washes their feet. He says to Peter, what I'm doing you don't understand now, but you will later. He's preparing them to enter into the Father's house. He's preparing them for Pentecost. Are you listening? In the New Testament, we are taught that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? We're also taught that there is a temple in heaven. Amen? And we understand when Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. In the original Greek, the word house is the word temple. In my Father's temple, and then the word in the Greek, the original Greek for the word mansion is temple. So in my Father's temple, there are many temples. This has to do with abiding in God. He's a temple and we are temples. It has to do with worship. Amen. This has to do with the fact that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, the Lord was preparing the disciples to enter into the kingdom, to enter into the Father's house, into the temple of God. But he said, not all of you are clean. And he was speaking of Judas. Are you listening, folks? And I would say in this hour, not everyone is clean. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about those outside the temple. I'm talking about those that are supposed to be God's people. Some of you are not clean. Amen. Some of God's people need deliverance. Amen. It's true. Some of God's people need deliverance. They're not all clean. It's absolutely imperative that God's people be clean, prepared, before they enter into the presence of God or enter into God's house, the house of God, not speaking of a church building, but speaking of God's house. Amen? The presence of God. Jacob said, I was in the house of God and knew it not. He said, God was in this place and I knew it not. What made it God's house? Why did he call it Bethel? Because that's where the presence of God was. Amen? That's where God manifested himself. And wherever the Lord is, is the house of God. Amen? It's his presence. Amen. So you can have a church building, but if God's presence isn't there, that's not the house of God. That's not Bethel. There's no bread there. Amen? If there's bread... Amen. If there's meat, if there's food, if there's something cooking on the fires, it's because Jesus is there. It's because God's presence is there. Amen. It's because you're in the presence of God. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of churches today where people gather together and it's called the house of God, but the presence of God is not there. So now, let's go to a scripture in the book of Revelation. And this is uh, Revelation chapter 11. 
Revelation chapter 11. Now, folks, I want you to understand that by the power of the Holy Ghost, even as Jesus was preparing the disciples to enter into the kingdom, to enter into the Father's house, so we are doing the same. Amen. We're trying to help you to get ready to enter into the presence of God, to enter into the kingdom. And how do we do that? Well, Jesus said you're sanctified through the truth. And as we share truth with you, that truth will sanctify you. It will cleanse you. It will wash you. Amen. And that's what Jesus was saying to Peter. He said, if I don't wash you, you have no part. And he wasn't talking about his feet, his head, or his hands. He was talking about his soul. He was talking about his heart. Amen. God has to wash our hearts, brothers and sisters, to the degree that we have a new heart. Amen. A renewed mind. There has to be a sanctification. Now, Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Wow, I just realized that the scriptures are not even being placed. Revelation chapter 1. I just realized that the scriptures weren't being placed up there, and I fixed that. So um, now we'll pick up from Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. So it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Listen to this. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out. Why? Why not measure the, temp uh, the, the, uh, the court outside the temple? For it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. You don't want to be outside the door of the temple when the court is not being measured. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, you and I need to find our place in the temple of God now. Amen. We need to get in the door now. We need to let the Lord cleanse us now. We need to be washed now. Praise God. And we need to be sanctified now. Praise the Lord and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And even with fire, praise God. This is all preparation. This is all uh, that God is preparing this is preparation so that you and I can enter his kingdom. And we see in the scripture what's going to happen to those that are without the temple. Amen? And we notice that also the altar is included in the measurements of the temple. How many know the altar is outside the temple? You can't even enter the temple of God until you come to the altar. Amen. And the outer court of the temple, before you can go into the temple, amen, the first thing you come to is the laver. You got to wash. And then you come to the altar. And then you come to the altar of incense. Amen. And God is saying, measure the altar. Praise God. All the way up to the altar. That means the altar of incense is included. That means that the altar itself is included. The altar is a type of the cross. And the altar of incense is a type of prayer, intercession. Amen. And that's how we enter into the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. Through the cross, amen, and through prayer. So, this is included in the measurements. But God did not say measure the labor. Why? Because the labor is a type of the word. The washing of the word. 
And how many know Jesus Christ is the Word? And that's why He's not included, amen, in the measurements. How many know that when uh, the Lord shuts the door, there won't be anybody being washed after that? There won't be anybody uh, being cleansed after that. According to the Scripture, There are going to be those that will be washed in the blood, but they're not going to be sanctified or cleansed by the word, the washing of the word or or through truth. They're going to have faith in the blood of Jesus to be saved, and they'll be beheaded. The Bible says they're going to wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, but they're not going to experience the sanctification. They're not going to experience entering into the temple of God into the fullness. So, if you think it's enough just to be saved, you may not want to just, uh, you know, just be concerned with just being saved. Because it's not just the, uh, it's not just the, uh, the, the temple and the uh, altar of incense and the altar uh that is going to be, it, it, this, this is the only thing that's going to be included in the measurements. But we see that the labor is not included. That's, to me, that's serious. That tells me it's going to get more difficult to enter the kingdom of God. Look, you can't even come to the altar if you don't come to the labor first. And God does not even include the labor in the measurements. That's a serious thing. Folks, do you really want to be left outside the door? Outside the temple? Do you really want to be left out in the outer court with the Gentiles? That's where God's wrath is about to be poured out. In the outer court. Thank God that the altar, the altar of incense, the holy place with the table of showbread and the, uh, the candlestick, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, all of this is included in the measurement. But God says, don't include the labor and don't include the outer court. And then beyond the outer court is, is just the earth. It's the world. The whole world. This is the time, folks. Now is the accepted time to get in the door. To come into the temple. Because without the temple is going to be destruction. Hallelujah, people. Destruction is going to take place. In God's mercy, only a third at first is going to be destroyed because God is long-suffering. He's merciful. But I hope you understand, folks, that God is holy. God is holy. And to enter into the temple of God, you've got to be holy. Amen? You've got to be prepared. You've got to be cleansed. You've got to be redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, they don't, you don't hear that today. You don't hear that there's a difference between the blood of Jesus and the washing of the water of the word and the Holy Ghost. There's a difference. These are different levels of God's power. These are different levels of God's presence. You don't just enter into the fullness of God's presence. You've got to come through the process. Hallelujah. There's just so many people today, they're saved because they put faith in Jesus Christ and they experience the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed at Calvary And their sins are washed away, but they never go on. They never go on to the washing of the water of the word and be born again. And then go even further where they are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. And and then go on beyond that to be perfected and then be glorified. Amen. 
to enter into the temple of God, into the holy of holies. Folks, there's people in the body of Christ that enter into the holy place. They they receive the revelation of the word. They experience those things. But they never go into the holy of holies. They never enter in. Folks, through the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, we can come boldly to the throne of grace, amen, to obtain mercy, to find help in a time of need. We don't need to stay out in the outer court, amen. We don't need to stay out at the laver and down at the altar and out at the altar of incense. We can come all the way in into the holy place, amen, and receive the revealed word of God, hallelujah, and then move on in to the holy of holies, amen, where only the high priest could go once a year but not without the blood brothers and sisters uh, through Jesus Christ uh, and the Holy Ghost uh, we can come all the way in amen into the kingdom of the living God hallelujah all the way hallelujah to the throne where the mercy seat is where the angels are where the cherubims are amen into the presence uh, of the living God God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for anything less. Praise the Lord. Come all the way in. All the way. All the way, brothers and sisters. In the Old Testament, only the high priest Only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Praise the living God, brothers and sisters. The Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies in the mercy seat is a type of of the throne of God. Hallelujah. The mercy seat. We can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Amen. At the throne of God. If I perish, I perish, but I must I must go into the king. I must go before the king. Amen. I've come to the kingdom of such a time as this. Hallelujah. Only the bride in this hour is going to go in before the king. Only the bride in this hour is going to intercede before the throne of God, brothers and sisters. But last but not least at all, The bride of Christ will be caught up to God and to his throne and sit with Jesus in the throne. What do you suppose the bride will be doing in the throne? She's going to be interceding with Jesus Christ in the throne, interceding for the church. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, this is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come up. Amen. In sit with him in his throne. Jesus is interceding for us in the throne of God. He intercedes to the Father. He talks to the Father on our behalf, brothers and sisters. And the bride is going to be caught up to that place. There's no higher calling. There's no no greater place in God but to be caught up to this place of intercession, to this place, amen, where we pray, where the incense, amen, is offered, amen, by the angel. The scripture says that the incense will be cast unto the earth, mixed with coals off the altar, mixed with the prayers of the saints. How many know the bride's going to have part in the judgment of God? The bride is going to be have part in the meeting out of God's judgment upon the wicked, upon the earth. She has a part in that. 
And if we can't judge ourselves in this hour according to the truth, brothers and sisters, do you not know we're going to judge angels? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you not take the word of God seriously? Do you not believe the truth? Amen. Brother Joseph is telling you the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You remember John fell down, was going to worship, and he thought it was Jesus. He thought that his guide was Jesus, but it was really a brother in Christ. He says, don't worship me. I'm just one of the fellow brethren that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Worship God. Amen. If John was going to worship one of his brothers, we see Peter, Cornelius was going to worship Peter, and Peter said, get up off your face. Brothers and sisters, eye is not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Paul said, I'm persuaded that nothing, nothing is worthy. Listen, nothing. Nothing you go through in this life is worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The God said he's going to make the synagogue of Satan to come and worship before us. They're not worshiping us. They're going to worship before us. They're worshiping God. Amen. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Some are going to rule and reign with Christ. But you must be washed. You must be cleansed. Amen. You must be included in the measurements and not be left in the outer court. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wash me, Jesus, now, Lord, please. Cleanse me now. Give me truth now, Lord. Hallelujah. Help me to get ready now. Don't just wash my hands, my head. Don't just wash my feet, Lord, but wash my heart. Amen. Wash my soul. Wash me every whit, Lord. Every whit, every whit, every whit. Hallelujah. To perfection without fault, innocent, the saints of God, overcomers, the bride of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us press toward that mark, brothers and sisters. Let us press towards that goal. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's forget about the things of the past. Forget about the ashes Amen. Forget about the remains of the sacrifice. Forget about all that past, everything in the past. Let it go. Forget about it. Amen. And press on towards that mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The resurrection from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. A glorified body. Amen. We're in corruption. Where incorruption becomes our nature, the divine nature, incorruptible, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for us, our inheritance in Christ Jesus, where the Holy Ghost replaces the fallen nature with his own divine nature. Amen. That you and I might stand in the presence of the living God in this hour. Amen. And be part of his judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many know it's not going to be long before the Lord is going to suddenly appear in his temple? And who shall abide the day of his coming? He sits as a refiner's fire and as full of soap. Who shall abide that day when the Lord appears? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Judgment is coming. It begins in the house of God. God bless you.